one of the things I do that is an adaptive way of gardening for somebody who's disabled is I use a lot of containers. And today we're going to specifically talk about some of the containers that I use, how they work, how I set them up, and just really, are they productive? Um, the first thing I want you guys to take a vision of is this. I call this my Scooty Puff Junior. I get the term, in case some of you are as big of uh, sci-fi geeks as I am from Futurama, Philip J. Fry's little vehicle that he used in one of the episodes. Um, this is my Scooty Puff Jr. It's what I do, what I use when I'm working out here and that keeps me from having to bend and I can sit while I work. Um, this little section right along here of my house is some of my little container barrels. And I have actually brought these barrels with me from our last house, so I've been using them for many years now. And it was a very, very good investment. Um, when I purchased the barrels, the smaller barrels are, I think they're 35 gallon barrels. These are the smaller ones. And I believe I paid $10 a piece for them and took a reciprocating saw and cut them in half to make the two barrel or two planters out of each barrel. Originally these barrels held um, a food grade uh, syrup. Um, actually I think they held Hawaiian punch if I can remember right because they smelled uh, all Hawaiian-y and fruity when I first got them. But you want to use something that's a food grade barrel to start with. Um, like I said, these are the smaller barrels I have. I also have two, four, so it's two 55 gallon barrels that were adapted into these containers. Like same deal, they also had Hawaii, I think these had root beer or something in them. I think it was root beer for these. Um, but it was the cola syrup. So again, it's a food grade bucket. Um, I liked the fact that they were white because they were kind of a neutral color. And I think I paid 15 or possibly $20 a piece for each 55 gallon barrel, which means that I got two planters for the price of each barrel. Um, the larger barrels, as you can see, are just about ideal for growing tomatoes, things like that. Um, this first barrel here, that is one cherry tomato. And it has all grown over to the second barrel even. It's just laying over on top of there. And then I have a next one and a next one. They were both had cherry tomatoes in them also. So these second barrels out here, they, we, we had a tomato hornworm this year. And he kind of did a little bit of chomping on these things. So that's what I finally discovered was the problem, why it wasn't a very uh, productive year for this end of the garden. We picked most of them off. I do think there's one more tomato hornworm running around here someplace. And he was left because when I saw him, he had a parasite on him. That will kill tomato hornworms. So I would like to leave him to allow those parasites to grow and produce so we can have more parasites for next year. Here we are up close and personal with one of the barrels. Or actually, it's, it would be the two halves of one barrel. Um, if you can see right down here, the barrel on the left is the top. Or I should say the planter on the left is the top of the barrel. The planter on the right is the bottom of the barrel. Now, I do this a bit different than I've ever heard anybody do it, but it has been very, very successful for me. Um, I basically turned each half barrel into a self-watering planter. And the way I did that was I did not poke any holes at the bottom of the barrel. Each barrel, even these tops, they had the plugs in them so they are sealed and they will hold water. What I did to make it be a self-watering planter and not just something that would, you know, kill my plants, I hope you can see this. Get down here if I can see those holes 
I drilled about a quarter inch hole, three of them, around the base of each of the 35 gallon barrel halves and it is about an inch to two inches above the base. There's the hole in this one if you can see it. I hope I can get it without. But I drilled it like that because I wanted to retain some water at the bottom of the, pl the barrel. Now obviously if you have a barrel full of water you're going to have plants with rotten roots and that will not be okay. So to save the plants, to give them that reprieve that they need for the water, but still allow them to, to be self-watering. I filled the bottom of the barrel up to just past the hole. I filled it full of lava rock. And you will find out that you can find lava rock in a great big bag because people use those to put on gas grills. And it's a cheap rock. Some people actually use them for landscape. Um, rock, but it's a cheap rock to buy. It's very porous and light and open and actually since it's an igneous rock, which means it comes directly out of the volcano vent, it's really high in minerals, which is also a good thing for the planters. And I put that lava rock in the base, completely fill the base up past the point of the holes. At that point, I start adding my compost, and I try to add really good compost. Um, these barrels are large enough that I try to treat them as I would a garden bed, a raised garden bed. I try to add blood meal, bone meal, other organic fertilizers as needed. I try to put some compost in them, freshen up the compost every couple of years. Um, but I don't really change out the whole soil. I try to keep the soil amended and working like it needs to be working. Um, but what happens in that situation is some of the soil will actually work its way down into and in between the lava rocks. And the rest of the soil, of course, stays above the lava rock. The soil that works down between the lava rocks acts like a capillary. And it will help the rest of the soil capillary action and soak up the water from that bottom reservoir. The plant roots will go down till they start hitting rock and then they kind of turn away. So the plant roots are not in the standing water and yet water will come up through the bottom of the pot to the plants which has worked really really well. Now you're seeing a pretty pathetic little specimen here and that's because he was uprooted the other day. I don't know why I left the stick in there but um, we were working on these and this little guy got pulled out the other day and he wasn't being productive anyway and this is the end of the season so that's why he's standing there <laughs> so don't think I'm showing you how to grow wonderful plants and they're looking like cred but um, anyway a 35 gallon pot is sufficient and like I said this is the end of the season this is October and I'll show you plants are starting to you know die back it's been cold getting colder here at night but you can see we still have quite a bit of peppers on this and I have banana peppers on here and I have uh, like a jalapeno pepper on this one and um, you know they've been a pretty productive peppers this year we've gotten all the peppers we really needed from three basically three or four pots of peppers as far as the spicy hot peppers we have bell peppers planted elsewhere but um, you know it's it's a very productive way to do it one large pepper plant will fit in a 35 gallon or like a smaller plant like uh, most of your jalapenos or your banana peppers you could put two in there. Um, not only did these pots grow two pepper plants they also produced each pot had one sweet potato plant in it. Um, if you have the soil done properly in these planters you can plant a lot in them. You can crowd crops into them. You do have to be sure your fertility stays up you do have to maintain your water because obviously you know two plants in a pot is going to drink more water than one plant in a pot but you you can do that that can all be done and it can and be done successfully so um, these this one two three four I dug ten pounds of sweet potatoes the other day out of these four pots so that's about two pounds of sweet potatoes a piece and that's in addition to the peppers that we grew all summer. Um, if you plant them kind of like they tell you to plant a decorative pot, you can plant 
they always tell you to plant a thriller, a filler, and a spiller. That's, that's the little words. The thriller, in this instance, would be the pepper because it's a tall, nice plant. The filler, in the instance of these two pots, we've got some marigolds planted. And you can plant basil, you can plant herbs, you can plant other plants like that. That so will go around the peppers or the tomatoes and provide them kind of a little bit of shade at the roots and a little bit of base. And then you still have room for your spiller. And in that instance, the spiller is the sweet potato. And we're going to scooch down here because I still have a sweet potato to harvest. Um, you can also notice that I have like a plastic chicken wire on the top of that and right back there's the reason for this. These hens love to get in my pots and dig. Urgh. But they do their productive job so I can't complain about them too much. Now this is a large 55 gallon barrels and like I said it had a potato in it this year. It had a marigold, in, I mean a tomato in it this year. Of course, the tomato I've already mentioned was devastated by some tomato hornworms, so it, it kind of is a puny-looking potato. We had potato, we had marigolds, and we had sweet potato vine. And there was one sweet potato vine planted in this planter in the front, and um, obviously the potato vines will hang down over the side of the planter, so it gives the filler plant plenty of room and it gives the thriller plant plenty of room is if you get a really dense tomato plant I'm gonna see if I can turn this around here and show you really dense tomato plant like that one it tends to shade out the plants underneath as you can see that's still got a sweet potato vine on that pot that's hanging out down at the base because it just goes for the foot where the sun is but on that particular tomato plant there it was never thinned out or anything stop got a chicken talking to me it was never thinned out so it shaded out our filler plant in that instance um, but normally if you thin your potatoes like you or your tomatoes like you should you can still grow your marigold or herbs or whatever you want to grow But we're going to dig the sweet potato out of this pot. If I can see if I can get this chicken to quit talking to me long enough. She's down here trying to be a helper. And it's just bad. Anyway, first step we're going to do is we're going to take away the outer leaves. And we're just going to break these off. Like I said, this was basically... There's the plant, basically. Um... There's a little weed in there, but I mulch my pots just like I would if it was a garden bed. I put shavings, uh, sawdust shavings in it, and that helps to keep them moist and and productive. And um, like I said, this is October, so most of my mulch now has already kind of worked its way in. Um, I did add a little bit of granular fertilizer to this pot also, just trying to give it little extra boost because you do need to keep your fertility up if you're going to intensely plant plants in this thing and I'm going to just loosen up the soil and we will see what kind of harvest I get from my one little potato in this planter this multiple planted planter you just have to take your spade and loosen <laughs> My little helpers are... <sighs> my, my. So I'm going to start loosening some swell back. And we'll see what we got done in here. Everybody wonders if a... planter is even worth their time. And, you know, I, I use these planters because I'm disabled. But keep in mind, you know, these planters can be used on the patio. And you can grow quite a bit of produce. But a planter like this can be used 
on a patio, in an apartment building. Um, since it's there's a nice stone that needs to be taken out. But it can be used a lot of places where you couldn't grow a typical garden. <laughs> I see there's just no way around it. I'm going to have to have help. And I'm kind of just being careful here because I do have the tomato in there still and I do have the marigold in there still and I'm, not, I'm trying not to disrupt them which is why if you're going to plant it like this you probably should like I said give it plenty of space and put the sweet potato really towards the front of the pot But yeah. That is one little potato vine grown in one little planter. And that's really not a bad little harvest for one little sweet potato. That's enough for a meal. Um, you know, it, it, it is a productive thing to do.